Good evening. Welcome to TDM Talk Show. I'm your host, Kelsey Wilhelm. Our guest tonight is Manuel Vasconcelos Correa da Silva, a creative, designer, and co-founder of This Is My City Festival, now celebrating its 11th edition. With a long history in the city, da Silva has pushed the city's diversification through various platforms, from co-founding his design company, Lines Lab, to developing the mobile app, IMO. But of particular pride is the growth of This Is My City Festival, which is now reaching out far beyond the Pearl River Delta, all the way to Brazil. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you. So This Is My City kicks off 22nd of November. Yes. Um, and we're not only this year going to see events in Macau and Shenzhen, but you're also expanding further. So you're looking at China, but then you're also taking a big leap across the ocean, going to Brazil. Yeah. Why? I think it's for those who are in Macau and know uh, what is the role of Macau uh, between China and the rest of the world. First of all, the connection with the Portuguese speaking countries, that's something that uh, everybody knows about it. And that justifies our, as you mentioned, that leap across half of the world to go into Sao Paulo. Mm -hmm. um, that for us is, is something quite uh, amazing uh, because it's very far away um, and we are actually taking China and Macau that far to Sao Paulo in Brazil. But also um, what we believe we, we, we need to represent in the region. And that's where last year we uh, were for the first time in Shenzhen. Mm -hmm. We are going this year for the second time, but we are adding to that list of cities, uh, Zhuhai. Mm -hmm. um, very different cities, uh, Zhuhai and Shenzhen. So we have a different approach to each of them, but we do believe that Macau is part of the region of the Delta um, needs to be integrated and we believe we also need to be integrated so we do have an extension of our program this year to the city of Zhuhai. Mm -hmm. Now this is interesting because this seems to be one of the few cases in which we have the concretization or the manifestation of two different initiatives at the same time the Greater Bay expansion concept as well as the Portuguese speaking countries platform. Um, how did you I mean, it's a natural synergy in between the festival and, and the Portuguese-speaking platforms. But how, how do you liaise with the government or with various government entities about this? Actually, I think that particular relationship with these two major sort of... Uh, they are political, but they are also cultural uh, uh, situations that uh, are very particular to Macau. Mm -hmm. They are... Uh, for us, it's, it's very obvious. Um, of course, it's easy to understand our natural relationship with Portuguese-speaking countries, mm -hmm. being born in Portugal, being Portuguese, and so on. Um, but being here and living in this uh, 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 region, uh, I, I, I cannot actually, I, it's hard for me to understand not to explore what we ha the cities we have around. Mm -hmm. And that's what we've been doing for the last maybe five years, is trying to understand what is this Per River Delta about. Not only the political statements, but for us. Mm -hmm. So we've been exploring a lot the city of Shenzhen, of course, Zhuhai, it's next to us, but also trying to understand how could we improve our relation with Hong Kong so near but sometimes so far away mm -hmm. um, and so suddenly it's very natural for us to sort of explain this situation to the government and I think for them to easily understand um, what is a, a sort of a, a, a real plan, something very concrete to do mm -hmm. uh, that in a way touches those political sort of statements they s sort of talk so much about it. Mm -hmm. We want to do so much about it as they talk so much about it. Sort of a cultural bridge kind of bringing together the... Yeah, and, and the cultural bridge makes it everything much easier. Mm -hmm. If you go for the political bridge, that makes everything much more complex. Mm -hmm. But that's not our goal, and it's not on our background. So, of course, everything can be political and everything can be culture, but we are very focused on promoting the best of talent that we find around. And uh, until now, it's been quite smooth and very exciting. Speaking of talent, were you, I mean, looking at these, these different cities, they all have their unique pool of talents. They all have their, their specific characteristics of how they grew, what the, their governments were behind them, how they were established. Were you surprised by the talent pool that you found in a city such as Shenzhen, uh, such as Zhuhai, such as Hong Kong? 
Um, yes, yes. Uh, as I am when I go to Brazil or to Lisbon, or because actually, if you go somewhere and you, and you search the right way in the right places with the right people, you'll be probably be sort of surprised in mm -hmm. some way. What what was more interesting for me was and for us with the team uh, producing and uh, sort of building the concept that this is my city was that we found something like a, a common ground between what we found in Shenzhen, in, 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 in Brazil, in Lisbon, yeah. in Macau. And, and that common ground is where we believe we can make a leverage to sort of grow and expand the, the concept of the This Is My City Festival. All right. Now, this is it's a big jump because they're going the, you're taking Wu Tiaoren, who were the winners of the Chinese Music Media Awards, the Taiwan Golden Indie Music Awards, all the way to Sin São Paulo 2018 Music Convention. That's going to be December 5th to 9th. Um, how, what was their response when you said, hey, we're taking you to Brazil? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was, they are very young. So for them, it's sort of a, a, an adventure that is mm. coming in, you know. And uh, we were, for the first time I met them, and I, I, I actually met them not on the stage. I met them just uh, as friends of friends in, mm. in Shenzhen. And then I had the chance to see them in Hong Kong later on. And uh, we, we sort of became friends right away. And it was very easy, again, to feel that kind of link. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm, I'm sort of this thing that these guys can be easily friends of my friends that are related with music, like in Macau or in, in Lisbon, for instance. Mm -hmm. So for them, I think being so young and being in China, go all the way to Brazil, it's sort of a, an amazing adventure. I don't think they have totally clear the idea that Macau is sort of this platform that links them. Mm -hmm. But I don't think they need to. What they need to is really enjoy the experience of being there. At the same time, we are worried, or we, our, 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 if one way is to, for us to promote their, their trip there, their experience there, mm -hmm. is also to promote the people who are going, actually, the audiences that will be in Brazil to experience them. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's another part of our job. So the same way it was a surprise for them, it was the same way it was a surprise for the same people when we said, we want to take you to Iran. Mm -hmm. Isn't it Portuguese? Should they speak Portuguese? Is this Portuguese and mm -hmm. Lusophonie and so on? And we said, no, I think these are the guys we should take. Mm -hmm. um, and so there is this like sort of expectation of how are we going to uh, be, uh, how are we going to be impacted and how are we going to impact, uh, in this case, Sim São Paulo, with the first presence of Chinese uh, artists in this event, and Macau being sort of the, um, the link, the platform in mm -hmm. a way. So that for us, it's, it's quite exciting. Well, you're also bringing some other Chinese bands to Macau as well. You have Wang Wen, mm -hmm. which was just recently announced, I believe, and Pet Conspiracy as yeah, well, yeah, recently yeah, announced. Exactly. Uh, Post-rock and electro-punk bands. But you're also not only focusing on, on Chinese artists, you're also bringing the component of Portuguese-speaking countries and Portuguese-speaking music to Macau as well, again, yeah. to, uh, to expose that to this audience. So we're going to have Celeste, Celeste Mariposa yes. from Portugal doing the afro Bile sessions in Shenzhen, also in D2 and in LMA, yeah. João Vieira. Yeah. But then you also, you're going to have two talk sessions, which look yes. very interesting. So one is going to be Live Houses in the City, um, which will be orated by Vincent Chung from LMA and Simon from the Beishan World Music Festival. Yes. What is the concept behind the Live Houses in the City talk? So th this has to do with sort of uh, um, the festival. It's it, you can sort of split it into one are the, the the showcases, the concerts, the the, the DJ sessions, and all mm -hmm. that. Um, another part is the conferences, the talks. So we want to be our platform. Uh, this is my city. As a second title, that has to it is global creative network. Mm -hmm. To build that network, we need to meet people, we need to talk, we need to exchange. So talks, our talks come into that mission. So what we're doing is we're bringing a few DJs, as you mentioned, from Portugal, but also the promoters, the, the festival organizers, mm -hmm. the label agents, and so on. And so we're bringing them to see what is happening on this side of the world. And the sessions, the talk sessions, they, they are actually the tool we use sort of to get people together and to talk about it. Live um, houses uh, and, and the city, it's sort of the impact of live music houses in the cities. Mm -hmm. Macau has a lack of independent live music houses, I believe, we believe, uh, but has actually very good uh, sort of institutional ones. Mm -hmm. 
but we feel that this discussion is being held also in Hong Kong. We participated before in a, a conference where this was a, a topic. Uh, in Portugal is also, I think everywhere, the impact of these venues is very important to the sort of the cultural agenda of a city. Mm -hmm. uh, so we want to talk about that, see what are what is happening in Shenzhen or in Zhuhai and the same what is happening here in Macau or in Lisbon and try to see what can we learn from each other. And the, the other talk itself, festivals in the city, yeah. does that have a bit of a different angle? Yes, in this case it's more into how festivals can impact the cities. Uh, one of the, 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 um, the ways we can talk about it is uh, about, the, for instance, impacting tourism mm -hmm. industry mm -hmm. or this cultural uh, tourism industry. Uh, we know that, for instance, in Portugal, the program of the, the summertime of Lisbon is packed, mm -hmm. full of festivals, uh, from the mainstream to the smaller ones, from the ones in the big cities to the ones in the small cities. And in Macau also, we have a great agenda of all kinds of festivals, from mm -hmm. cinema to music to food to, to everything. So uh, festivals, it's sort of... Um, um, a manifestation of these networks and how can we bring these networks to the people. So we want to talk about that. Again, ex share experiences, share knowledge and build up our global creative network. Now it seems like within these two talks themselves, live houses in the city theoretically could focus more on the local audience and the long-term impact of having a creative <coughs> hub where people can access music, be exposed to mm -hmm. that. Whereas the festivals in the city seems to focus more on, say, the tourism audience or the transitory audience. Yeah, the industry, yes. Okay, that's, it's interesting that you're bridging both sides because, because both we are have part a of them, yeah. And, 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 and we, we, we need to be aware of both of them, mm -hmm. more at the level, a local level, artist level, talent level, and also at the uh, industry level. Mm -hmm. um, that's actually our daily management of pre, the, for pre-production and so on. Mm -hmm. When we go to other festivals, when we are invited to other festivals, that's where we are always paying attention uh, at these different levels of the industry to see how can we better make um, content because in the end I think it's all about producing new content and mm -hmm. giving the chance of people who have talent to have channels to promote that content um, and how can we contribute to that because in the end uh, uh, this, this content has great value and if we find actually the right channels and the right opportunities um, there is a lot for everybody on that uh, chain, on that mm -hmm. chain of of of, uh, of the creative industries, to actually um, grow and 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 uh, and, um, and create diversify the economy. For instance, mm -hmm. sort of a hot topic also here in Macau, and we do believe in that. That's you know it's very interesting. The diversification of the economy is something that is necessary for Macau to to develop properly. The there are festivals, there are different types of, of artistic focuses that have been given more and more um, support and more visibility over the years. Uh, cinema is definitely mm -hmm, yeah. one that we can see, the IFFM is coming up. Um, has music been given the same amount of importance as some of the other type of art forms? I think music maybe is the, the, the one that, that has the most. Uh, okay. The music festival of Macau, it's sort of one of the longest festivals we have in Macau. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I imagine has a great investment as a budget from the government, so it's, it's a great uh, event. Um, maybe what we are lacking is sort of a diversification on mm -hmm. the, for the styles of music, like mm -hmm. jazz. Uh, we, for instance, are very focused on um, more indie sides mm -hmm. of uh, independent and emerging uh, artists, dance music, mm -hmm. uh, world music, and so on. But I don't think we, I, I think in Macau we are quite well, um, we have a, a great uh, uh, agenda. Mm -hmm. uh, but for us it's not only about Macau, it's yep. about the region and yes. how can we move around. We, 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 uh, it's, it's great for you to spend a weekend in Shenzhen and have a, a perfect show and in the middle of the week go back to Macau and have another perfect mm -hmm. show. And, and it's one hour difference, so I, I, we do believe that more and more we will um, uh, experience culture and consume culture, not only being from Macau in Macau, but actually by going to the different cities around us looking for um, better content. 
So you literally get to go on research trips to festivals. Oh, of course, of course. <laughs> well, that's, that's great. That's great because that's where you actually build your mm -hmm. network. That's actually where you hear the band for the first time mm -hmm. and you can talk with them and see if how they are and, and you can also talk about what you do. So for us it's, it's very exciting. That's what we will do in Brazil. So it's uh, from the 5th to the 9th, mm -hmm. so it's all days of hard work with speed meetings, with uh, uh, conferences, the concerts, um, and it's all about building that network. Mm -hmm. Speaking of, of talent, in regards to, you are also featuring local talent, we've got to forget the G. Yes. Um, there is, from, from what I've heard from various people in various industries, there is a lot of talent in Macau. Mm. Um, that talent is, is based here, it chooses to continue to be based here, but um, is there an industry for, say for example, musicians in Macau? Is there an industry for people to be able to develop within the cultural and creative industries and be successful, make a living out of it? In Macau only? I don't think so. Okay. But uh, I also don't believe anyone should think like that. Mm -hmm. like, if we are uh, one hour from distance from Zhuhai, Shenzhen, Hong Kong, uh, what is stopping you to go and show up with your work mm -hmm. uh, anywhere? You know. So um, I think Macau is a great place to be but we should be connected with everywhere and with Sao Paulo also. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not so much about um, uh, being too dependent in Macau, but be more independent and sort of breach out. But I still do believe that Macau is it's a good sort of center point where you can then uh, move around and know more people. Um, I think uh, we have uh, uh, um, uh, uh, an industry related with the tourism industry in Macau that is more and more getting into the entertainment side. Mm -hmm. So then I think with the years to come, there will be sort of a, a development, mm -hmm. but for a certain type yes. of, of entertainment. Um, but I think in other cities like Shenzhen, you, you, you can actually find uh, more independent, more diversified kind of markets. Mm -hmm. So um, nowadays with globalization, you, you need to use all the tools, all the digital tools, all, all the uh, social networks and everything you have to sort of reach out. And, and uh, so it's, it's about being in Macau, but it's also about being active mm -hmm. in the region and uh, anywhere you, make, you feel it makes sense. Being active in the region also means that aside from the, let's say, the internet side of things where you can mm. engage your audiences very directly, even through um, platforms such as Weixin uh, or WeChat, yeah. as many people know of it, um, there, there's also the engaging directly. There's, yes. no, there's no, um, nothing that can substitute being face-to-face -face with an audience, whether it's a group of 20 people or 2,000 yes. people. Yes. Um, the, you mentioned not only focusing on Macau and going and seeking out other places to regionally, um, mm. How does that, how, what have you seen in terms of the audience responses in different cities? Uh, Shenzhen, Zhuhai, Macau, Hong Kong. How do they react? Because Macau is very unique mm -hmm, in terms mm -hmm. of the audiences. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there can be a full house. Sometimes you will expect a full house and there will not be yes. that expectation. Yeah. But is it different? Is the audience reaction different between different cities? Totally different, uh, not totally different, but different, mm -hmm. they're different. I think there is some common uh, uh, love for music, mm -hmm. love for live shows, uh, but there is differences. Uh, simple stuff, uh, the time of shows, for mm -hmm. instance, it's different from city to city. In Macau, we're tending to finish earlier. In China, shows finish much earlier. Mm -hmm. If you go to Europe, things are much more prolonged through the night. Uh, and that changes the experience you have. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, they like the same band. Uh, so I think uh, uh, audiences, we need to, to, to take care of them, but uh, we, we cannot be too... Um, in our case, I, I talk about this is my city, um, we are not too worried about sort of engaging with the masses, mm -hmm. with a lot of people, mm -hmm. we, because we know we don't have the structure for that. Mm -hmm. So the idea is to try to design the best experience for those who are there. All right. Okay, and that's, that's our main focus. 
And this year, I think we're going to have uh, some nice developments. And people who, will, who had at least been in uh, past editions of the festival will, will feel a big difference. And this has to do with the things like the venue, how you get there, um, the first thing you see, mm -hmm. um, all the ambience, the facilities, where in the city you are. Th those kinds of details are very important. And um, that's something you feel everywhere you go, in Chenja, in, in, in Sao Paulo, or in Lisbon. Um, so people nowadays, they want the full experience. The, the concert is part of it, and it's a, uh, maybe the most important, important part of it. But also, this, uh, what you have around, how, where you are, the people who you are with. Mm -hmm. And so it changes not so much for the quantity of people you have, but mm -hmm. the quality of the people you have. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that's, I think, part of our mission as, as festival sort of designers in a way, because it's our brand, is everything made by us, is how can we better design this experience that comes with a brand. In this case, this is my city. And you, you do something which is more increasingly unique um, nowadays in which there is the focus and there is the attention to have live music, to have bands. It would be much easier to organize something with four DJs, yeah. two CDJs and a mixer and a sound system and yeah. you can you know, supposedly take that anywhere and have thousands of people yes, with fireworks. Yes, yes, yes. Um, why choose to still have bands themselves? Uh, it's not because they have a drummer and a guitar player. It's not. It's just because of what they do. Mm -hmm. So I do believe you can have uh, two turntables and a microphone mm -hmm. and do a hell of a show. Yes. And you can have uh, full band sets with uh, everything, 12 guys in, in, in stage, and it's also amazing. Mm -hmm. So it's not so much about uh, what kind of sort of hardware they have, mm -hmm. but it's about what, in the end, how it sounds, how you feel it. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, there is something about uh, rock and roll bands format that for us, it's, 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 it's amazing mm -hmm. uh, and it's uh, unique. So in the end, we don't discriminate one to the others, we, we, we have both. Mm -hmm. So we have both. So this year we have two DJs and we do believe that DJs is it's something very important mm -hmm. because it's a, a specific part of the industry uh, with dance music, with, the, with the, its own venues, with mm -hmm. its own calendar also. Those yes. things you can do it mm -hmm. later, for instance, while live music it's something different. So again, the experience, the full experience of your day at This Is My City when you start at 5.30 all the way to three in the morning if you want, and the people you see, the music you hear, the places you go. Mm -hmm. That's the whole experience that we are worried about. In terms of the, the cities themselves, uh, when you were setting up the, the rundown for each city, did you, have a particular demogra did you have a particular demographic in mind, and did that demographic shift from city to city, say purely based upon age difference? Uh, no, 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 no. It's, it's, it, at this moment, we are sort of uh, getting into these cities for the first time. Mm -hmm. Sao Paulo is an example, it's really yeah. first time. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't have too much of a, a, a deep understanding of it. Mm -hmm. I have my, my, our network there, mm -hmm. Sim Sao Paulo, they've been doing it for ages, so I trust them. Mm -hmm. They will guide me there once I'm there. Chenjan is a little bit different, I know a little bit better, but also, it's a huge city. So understanding takes time. Mm -hmm. uh, so we trust on, for instance, the partners and the venues who actually host us, because those guys have been there forever, and so they understand their crowds. What we do is we show them sort of a few choices, and they say, okay, maybe this first guys, and, and they work us with us with on the lineups and so on. Mm -hmm. But we like this kind of exploration that we are doing. You know, we 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 don't know everything about it, but. Uh, the proof that I think we are sort of uh, doing it in the right way is that we've been able to be doing it for the last 12 years. So mm -hmm. in the end, I think we, will, we are building some kind of an audience, but it's, it's very diverse. It's hard to um, sort of package it all in a f one or two boxes because again, each city, it's sort of uh, own characteristics. Um, each sounds, mm -hmm. if it is Jays on, uh, on clubs or live houses, 
or a talk, a conference. So, so we don't worry too much about that because we believe if the content is good, the speakers are good, the DJs are good, the bands are good, people will, will probably like it. Now, there's, um, there's been a huge rise in, in recently, probably because things have gotten cheaper, in people choosing to produce their own music and, mm. use, and create electronic music. Um, do you think that electronic music, it already has a representation in the festival so far, do you think that that representation is going to grow over the coming years? I think it should, like the rock representation should mm -hmm. grow and, 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 and uh, for instance this, uh, this year with the Celeste Mariposa we have uh, a lot of uh, African related mm -hmm. music, I think this should also grow. Um, again, not our curatorship is it's it's very broad and, and mm -hmm. we, we try not to be too coherent mm -hmm. I think having some kind of clashes between yeah. uh, styles and, and formats actually sort of opens up the mind of, of the audiences because they they have a chance to sort of experience different worlds different uh, uh, sounds um, but of course I think uh, even experimental music and so on I think mm -hmm. those those are things Things we are always looking for, uh, and we don't want to be uh, too focused on only one genre of music. Mm -hmm. And we don't believe we are a music festival. Out of that, we are a creative industries festival, mm -hmm. if you want. So we want to talk about uh, uh, design and urbanism. We want to talk about music and mm -hmm. festivals. Um, but for instance, this year, I think by Friday, we'll announce something very interesting that is related with photography. All right. um, so uh, we do believe that uh, the, uh, the cultural experience is not limited to music. It's limited to this, all this uh, uh, multidisciplinary kind of relationship between all these arts. and, and uh, and, uh, and industries. Mm -hmm. There's not only a, a focus on the artistic part of it, but also the industry that is behind it. It's interesting that um, many of the, the culturals and creative, cultural and creative industry people that you meet are involved in various different aspects. Mm. Um, so did you find that some people would reach out to you based upon one, one artistic aspect and then you end up developing that into be more encompassing or more, more uh, broad? Um, we, 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 once you are so focused on, on developing this, uh, this is my city concept, mm -hmm. you try to, everything you get, you try to see how can you, 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 um, you build and, and, and uh, sort of, again, contribute to this greater experience. Mm -hmm. And that is made by sometimes uh, going for the less obvious relationship with this musician mm -hmm. or with this producer or with this agent, mm -hmm. you know. So you really need to be open to sort of come up with you, uh, new um, new, new, new new challenges mm -hmm. because that's what makes also people more exciting about being part of your whatever you are doing. You mm -hmm. know? So um, and and we also like to be challenged. Uh, being in Brazil is also part of a challenge from Brazil to us. Mm -hmm. um, and we, what we are going to be, do there, uh, we'll also have this sort of duet between Brazilians and Portuguese speaking countries, uh, people related, and we will be doing a DJ set, but I don't know who is actually going to be on the other side. Right. And, and this is a format I'm actually quite uh, interested to know mm -hmm. how it's going to work, because maybe it's something we can also bring to, to This Is My City after. So, yeah, being really open to see what can catch the attention of people and uh, sort of uh, innovate in some way on the formats of, um, of, of the content and of the experiences we provide. That's great. Well, it's going to be coming up very soon, 22nd to the 25th of November, both Macau, Shenzhen, and Zhuhai, and then going all the way to Brazil from the 5th to the 9th for the Scene São Paulo 2018. Um, it's going to be a great run. I, yeah. I wish you all the best with the festival Thank coming you. up. Thank, Thank you. Thank you again for being on the show. Thank you. That was TDM Talk Show. Tune in next week for more talk show. See you then.